Hi, welcome to our very first house sessions. We're here with Julie Malone. Hello. <laughs> I've been, we've been together for many years, so it's great to start out this new thing with you. Well, it's an honor to be the first uh, uh, interviewee, I guess. Uh, yes, interviewee. Of the, uh, what are we calling it? The house sessions. The house sessions. Yes, which consists of seven questions. Mm -hmm. Six of them are pre-planned, and then seven has always been my lucky number. So the seventh question will be a wild card. So let's get started. Number one, tell us about your favorite part of this show. What makes it special? Well, I, I, what makes it special is I haven't shown in a little bit. I have mm -hmm. went through some, you know, some personal things in my life and I took a small break mm -hmm. from that, from, you know, showing right. and um, producing a body, large body of work. Mm -hmm. and so what is special is that I have this opportunity to, you know, put together, you know, really think about where I was going with my work mm -hmm. and, you know, get a cohesive um, group of work, yeah, group of work for this show. Um, Plus you're back with me. That's right. <laughs> okay, number two, what is something important you learned while putting this show together, either about yourself or the creative process? Well, I do have a new studio space, so there was some adjusting. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that maybe staying up too late is not the best idea when you have to drive home right. on the freeway, but um, I learned um, that to let go a little bit mm -hmm. and let my imagination carry this, not overwork um, the paintings. I have a tendency to do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Let just go of it. what? I mean, let go of see. overthinking. Oh. So I just kind of put a meditative vibe into these works where I allowed for creation to be whimsical and light and colorful and um, and you Versus achieve like that. Planning everything. Sure. Number three, moving along, we got to, it's <laughs> short. Oh, you know, I've always been pushing, but what does a great studio day look like to you? Mm -hmm. Well, it all a depends mm -hmm. on the last time I was in the studio, if I left it in a clean and organized, right. <laughs> there's nothing, I don't, I get mad, you know, angry at myself for not putting things away or clearing off my palette or something like that. But ideally, would is a day of really solitude and peace and quiet with my dog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somewhat organized. I'm not going to say I'm, you know, a perfectionist or anything, but I do, you know, like to have clean brushes ready to go and and clean, you know, mixing materials and so forth. Do you have a like a process before you shut down? Like, do you know that you're gonna come in and want it to be perfect? So do you make yourself yeah. clean before? Because yeah. that's what a lot of artists strive for, and I do too, but then I'm usually so tired by then. And so, anywho, <laughs> when you are working or in your whole creative process, do you have a favorite tool? Oh, wow, it depends on you know, where, what stage I am mm -hmm. working on. Um, preparing my palette, I do have the paint tube crank. You know, I don't know if you've seen those, but... I can imagine, but I don't... It's basically, it's a crank that gets every last drop out of your oh, nice. paint tube, mm -hmm. so you're not wasting any paint. And if you don't have one, you need to get one. And you know, get in touch with me and I'll hook you up. That with is it. your favorite tool though. Well, that that's cool. to begin. Yeah. And then, you know, um, I, I think gravity, oh. just using gravity to give in the initial stages of painting, mm -hmm. I prepare my panels with a nice wash and gravity gives me, you know, this illusion of depth, you know, it mm -hmm. pulls, the, you know, this wash will drip down and I get the drippy effects that, you know, you'll Which see. People in are never would think of that necessarily right. when they say tool yeah mm -hmm. so that's great and then in the uh final process where mm -hmm. i'm framing i have a pin nailer and it's oh. battery operated 
no longer pneumatic, so I'm very happy about that. But I, and it's just, you know, a tiny pin that holds these all together and, and some glue. And it's just, you know, it's, it's called a nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very fancy name. Mm -hmm. Do you have an up and coming project that you're excited about or what is next? I do. So my studio mate um, has moved, but he left behind an enormous amount of equipment, about $10,000 worth of printmaking equipment for both, um, uh, there's a press and there's a serigraph or um, uh, what do you, I don't know what the other name is, it, but it's the squeegee and you pull the paint over. Uh, Peanut gallery. Do we know what she's talking about? Screen printing, yeah, the, the, but um, anyway. The machine or the process? Or? Well, I just have all this printmaking equipment. Okay. So I'm excited a... to like on a new adventure mm -hmm. to, you know, I've had some experience in printmaking, uh, you know, my college days and then sure. um, working in the graphic arts industry, printmaking was kind of my focus mm -hmm. outside of college. So print, you yeah, want so to I'm get gonna, into printmaking. Yeah, I'm gonna start experimenting with these, this printmaking equipment. And it's I mean, it's great. there. So, um, you know, mass produced <clears throat> kind of situation. Well, you know we could talk for hours, <laughs> but this is a short house session. So I'm just moving along, not to be horribly mean or anything. But if you could show your work alongside any other artists throughout time, who would it be? So as a child, I would go, I grew up in Kansas City and we have the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in oh. Kansas City. And my dad would take me every, every other Sunday. And there was one painting there that truly like it, resonated with me and mm -hmm. I connected with it and it basically told me that you can do this mm -hmm. this is something you can do and that's um room with a view by Richard Diebenkorn so okay. I so would, Richard is Richard who you would like to show with yeah. if you could is he maybe you told me is he dead or alive he's no longer living okay. um but he, it could be anyone he's so. a you know contemporary artist he in the 50s and 60s um he did a lot of he was a colorist, very cool. so I'm very was very inspired by his paint application mm -hmm. and his composition, and of course the color. So. And you would talk about all those at dinner, yeah. or you know, which is the next question. But it doesn't have to be him in particularly. But it's a wild card question and the final question. But if you are having a dinner party. Just four people, including yourself, who would the other three people? It could be dead or alive, famous, somebody you miss, anything. Um, let's see. Well, Lucille Ball, just because she's a red, fellow redhead, oh, yeah, I can see hilarious. That. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Richard One. Diebenkorn would be cool. Two. Uh, let's see. Goodness, that's a, that's a tough one. Just off the top of your head. Please. Probably Michelle Obama okay. would be. I would be great. Um, and Bob Dylan. Oh well, that's four. So <laughs> you have to kick one of them off. Who well, is it? Richard. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Julie. I'm so glad to have you back in the gallery. All the work looks great. We've sold quite a bit. You are very popular and. Thanks for having Everybody me. Everybody loves seeing your work back here at Hauska Gallery, so thank you. Thank well, you. I just have to mention it was um, really great showing with Emily. Um, I love to see two our women. Of course. And mm -hmm. um, I know she's a hard worker. She, you know, hand builds everything mm -hmm. like I do. And I, that was very, a nice addition. I thought it was a good combination. Yeah, it was a good curation by our wonderful Totally. Lauren. Lauren. Yeah, uh, team. Teddy. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>